If you were walking along the lake shore in Cleveland in 1926, you would see this huge steel ball. It was five stories high and about 64 feet in diameter. It wasn't some newfangled tourist attraction. It was a hyperbaric sanitarium. And that makes for an interesting story. Dr. Orval Cunningham was a surgeon in Kansas at the time, and he had developed an anesthesia machine that would mix the right amount of ether, nitrous oxide, and oxygen. And this was a big improvement because in those days, there, there were problems when people were put to sleep with surgery, they would wake up uh, nauseous, there were breathing problems. So anyway, he solved that particular problem. But in 1917, 1918, the flu epidemic hit the United States. And of course, he was interested in respiration, so his attention gravitated to, to this. And uh, Dr. Cunningham had noticed before that people with respiratory problems who had moved from Denver, Colorado to Kansas City improved. And he wondered why this was. Well, he knew that Colorado was at high elevation, Kansas was low, and at lower elevation, there's more oxygen, of course. Anyone who's ever exercised at a high elevation would, of course, be familiar with this. So he wondered whether or not it was the extra oxygen that was helping the respiration of these people. And of course, with the flu, there were a lot of people who couldn't breathe properly. So what was he to do? Well, he knew that there was a device called a hyperbaric chamber. This was used by construction workers who were building bridges. It would be lowered down into the water. In order to keep the water pressure out, it had a lot of air pumped into it. So these people were breathing high pressure air, and of course air is 20% oxygen, so we're getting a lot of, of um, uh, oxygen to the system. But the problem was, if they came up too quickly, they would get what we call the bends, because the oxygen that had been pressured into their blood and nitrogen would come bubbling out and the hyperbaric chamber would solve this problem. They would go into this chamber, they would be pressurized, the gases would be pushed back into their uh, bloodstream to be released uh, more steadily and slowly after. So Cunningham borrowed one of these and he found that it worked, his patients got better. And then he had a, a rich person, a, a magnet who had made a lot of money with bearings of all kinds, and he had suffered kidney problems and turned out that he thought he improved in this chamber, and he donated a lot of money, one and a half million dollars to Cunningham to build this giant sphere into which a lot of people could be put. It had about 30 rooms, and they would be in there and inhaling uh, air under high pressure and supposedly got better. But the American Medical Association didn't think that the claims that Cunningham was making were all scientifically sound. He was claiming that people with diabetes would improve, people with kidney problems, all kinds of diseases would vanish if they were put into this hyperbaric sanitarium. So eventually the negative publicity generated by the American Medical Association uh, resulted in his clients basically disappearing and eventually uh, the big sphere was sold. For a short time it was a hospital and then it just became junk and it was sold for junk metal during uh, the war. And um, interestingly enough, now with the current COVID epidemic, this is being looked at again. And there are some preliminary studies that come out of China, which show that people who have extreme difficulty breathing, as many seriously afflicted COVID patients are, do better in a hyperbaric chamber. But this chamber is pressurized with pure oxygen. So it infuses oxygen into their body at a very, very high rate. Uh, it is a preliminary study, of course, it has to be followed, it has to be duplicated, but who knows? In the future, we may be seeing these giant spheres everywhere, hoping to solve the problem of, of COVID. But right now, I still wouldn't bet on it.